okay, well that seems like a real good approach. So you saw that we're going to use Newton's second law for the y component, for the x component, and for torque. You saw that because it's motionless, all the accelerations are going to be zero. It looks like you were really careful with the signs all along the way. Since you've already put in the signs, the variables just stand for magnitude. So I like to put in a dot to remind myself that this is just a magnitude because we've already put in the sign. Uh, let's see, the torque from the weight is uh, the distance times the force. That's easy because it's perpendicular to R. So that's L over 2 times the weight. And here you had to do the force times the sine of theta times the distance. But it looks like you did that fine. Then you did some algebra. So what was your answer for part B? Right, so they said the mass was 10 kilograms, and your instructor is going to let you use 10 for G. So what, what's the answer? 100 newtons. Good. Good. Well, let's keep working then. Good. I noticed in your answer key, well, in the, uh, so in the uh, little cheat sheet your instructor gives you, they tell you that the cosine of 30 is 0.87. I noticed in the answer key that the instructor just used 0.9. So that would say you use some calculations there. Mm -hmm. 0.9. And we already got the tension, which is 100. So we get that the magnitude of this force is 90 newtons. Now, we don't expect this answer to tell us the direction of the hinge force, because we've already okay. determined the direction of the hinge force. That's why I like to put in this dot to remind myself that all we're trying to get here is the magnitude. Mm -hmm. So what would it have meant? What would it have meant if this variable had come out negative? It would have made, mean, meant that we made the wrong guess over here. Oh, Once we've already guessed that it's going to the left, then this just stands for the magnitude. So it has to come out positive if we've made the right guess. So if we've made the wrong guess, and we get, and the magnitude comes out negative, that's our signal that we made the wrong guess, and we'd have to reverse this. In this case, we knew it was going to be to the left because it's balancing T sub x. But that's one way to determine what the direction is of hinge forces. You can kind of take a guess uh, and then work through the math. Uh, once you've taken your guess, your variable just stands for the magnitude. So if the magnitude comes out negative, you know your guess was wrong. Now, for this particular test problem, they didn't even ask us to calculate f sub y. So we do not, uh, we're not even going to have to work out whether this guess was right or wrong. Okay. However, uh, here's the way to, to, see, to see up front which direction that force is going to be in. Um, if you think about the torques, we know this is not rotating so that there's not going to be any torque overall. Um, so um, does this, ten is this tension here, is it going to have to be bigger or smaller than this weight? To, so these two torques have to balance each other out. The torque from the weight has to balance the torque from the tension. Um, well, does, um, is, it, is this then for this force going to be bigger or smaller than the weight since it's further away? Is it easier or harder for this force to create a torque since it's further away from the pivot? Oh, it's easier. Yeah, it's easier to, for this to create a torque than this. Okay. So this tension, this T sub Y, can be smaller than the weight and still create an equal torque. I see. Well, then in order, to, um, in order to keep the object from moving down, this really does have to be an upward force. Mm -hmm. 
in order to be an um, because we're going to have to, uh, the tension by itself is not going to be enough to, to keep this from moving in the y direction, because it's smaller than the weight. I guess we already kind of worked that out. Um, uh, we didn't quite work it out, but what we saw here, that you can see here that the t sub y component is going to be 50 newtons. Well, it's only 50 newtons, but the weight is 100 newtons. So there has to also be an upward hinge force to keep this up. The problem didn't actually ask us for that. And all, all this time you've been uh, using the pivot, you've been saying the pivot is the hinge. Why did you choose that as your pivot? Just because it was the most obvious. Yeah, it seems like the most obvious. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, you want to choose a place with a bunch of forces as your pivot, because then they don't exert a torque. But it's good that you saw that they still exert forces. There's still a force from the hinge, there's just no torque from the hinge. That's a mistake that some people would make. Maybe we talked about that in a previous session. But I wanted to point out, the only reason you get to choose the pivot is because the object isn't moving. If the object was moving, then the pivot would be what it's actually pivoting around. It's only on a statics problem that you can choose whatever pivot is convenient. Okay. Well, then we're ready for part D. <coughs> Let's actually draw the diagram for part Now we know there's not going to be a tension any force, force anymore because there's no more rope. Is there still going to be a weight? Yeah. Now, how about the hinge force? Well, is the hinge force still going to be put pulling upwards? Uh, yeah. Probably to balance out this weight. That's a little bit of a subtle issue. Yeah. Um, but there's a, something that's trying to pull this down, so the hinge force might be pulling up to go against that. Will, they, will the hinge force still be pulling to the left? Why? Remember, the hinge force is lazy. It's only going to do what it needs to. Oh. Um, yeah, I guess not since there's no tension force anymore. Remember, the only reason that we said that there was a hinge force to the left in the first place was to balance out the x component of this rope. Um, at first, the rope was trying to pull the object out of the wall, while the hinge was preventing that by pulling in the opposite direction. But now we're no longer trying to pull it out of the wall. So there's no reason for the hinge to be exerting a force. In fact, if for some strange reason the hinge was exerting a force, then the object would have to start moving into the wall, uh, which we know it's not going to do. Yeah. OK. Huh. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, maybe that was a subtler issue that you needed to do here. So it looks like in the answer key here, he drew one picture yeah. where there was an x component and one where there wasn't. He gives one like wiggle room. Okay. That, that, that helps me to think right. about it in a bigger Right. Way. So I guess what he's basically, he'll basically give you credit on these hinge problems for just drawing the two components that could exist of the hinge force. Theoretically, there could be these two components of the hinge force, although when we think about it more carefully, we know there's no x component. Okay. 